So what I'm good with is names, right? Nobody can front. El Boogie, who put the boogie in that? Me, like, it's facts. Jerry Wonder, Wonder, he does the wonders with beats. It's me. Um, so real quick, remember what I told y'all? I told y'all y'all at my house. And so there's like some drilling going on in the back and I sent the manager to Take two. Mark? I'm looking back and I was like the person who would give everybody they swag name. L Buggy. She bought the buggy. Jerry Wanda. And at times we hear about this place called the Booger Basement. Like, yo, and all of these records, John Forte, grab the mic. What's the Booger Basement? So the Booger Basement was our recording studio in East Orange, New Jersey. And it was um, my uncle, Jerry's father, and Rennell Duplass's father, those two brothers, my cousins. And we literally was in a basement. So what do Steve Jobs and the Fujis have in common? They was working out of their garage, and we was working out of our basement. And in the basement, we formed the booger. And people would be like, yo, why is it called a booger basement? You know, boogers is nasty. And what we was doing coming out of the basement was nasty. It was just so funky. In the early days, it was very interesting. So I always call myself like the Haitian Dr. Dre of my hood, like in the early days, like when I was watching NWA. I was like, I'm going to be like this guy. And the idea of like, what does that mean I'm going to be like this guy was more like, you know, I noticed like in my community, you had a lot of guys that were trapping, but they were rapping. And at the end of the day, everyone was trying to get an out. Like no one wanted to go to jail. So I figured like what I formed would be a safe haven. You know, you come to the booger basement, you know, we got Lauren, she'll sing a hook for you. You know, I had a complete entrepreneur spirit, you know what I mean? So after you're done recording, I would literally give you what's called a DAT. And a DAT is like a digital form of a cassette. And this DAT would be like now what you go... So if you go to a record company, nine times out of ten, they had these DAT machines where you can play the demo that you did. So um, being like... I, I knew like I was more of a nerd, so I always had an advantage of how to sell gear. And because the thing about being an entrepreneur, I was not just gonna sell you on, you have to pay for every part of the session was what I learned at an early age. So I would have to sell you time. So any kids that wanna get into like a cool studio and see how the business work, first thing is you're selling time and space. Can you imagine this hustle? You're literally selling time and space. Something you can't see, but you're making people pay, pay for it. Um, so, so you come in from the block. I said, okay, you're going to pay for the time and space. Second thing that I had was a big tape machine where I recorded everybody on. This tape machine was called a 456 Ampex Reel. 456 Ampex Reel. Sound like a bar. Big ass tape machine. And one track would be used for Simpty. What is Simpty, Clef? You losing us. Simpty was like, it was a code where it'd be like. It would be like the 24th track. And that's the track that you wanted to stay away from. So if you was bouncing vocals, you wanted to stay between 1 to 20. You ain't want to get into that 24 track. Best way to explain it is Bohemian Rhapsody. When anybody seen Bohemian Rhapsody and you see how Queen would keep layering those vocals on top of vocals, then you got to bounce those vocals and start again. So I was charging you for this big ass tape machine. So you literally was paying me for that. You was paying me for the dot. You was paying me for the time. So that means that by the end of the session, um, I'm getting a couple of hundred dollars from you. So one kid that I didn't 
think he was as savvy as I was when it came to the tech part of it. Um, great spitter. You know, I don't want to say his name because he was in the trap. And I'm not one of them rappers that be, like, announcing, like, let me drop a bar. And then dude be like, yo, did I just hear my name? But he was a tech head, too. I ain't know. So after his session, you know, he get what we call the invoice. And then so he paid me. And then when he paid me, days later, dude came back. And he was like, well, there's an item missing from my invoice. And I'm like, well, what, what the hell is missing, man? He's like, my tape, my, my, my tape. Like, where is my tape? And I'm like, I gave you your tape, man. You have the DAT, the G digital DAT. That's all you need when you go to Tommy Boy. They are gonna think that you a professional, like, you don't be wanting to walk in there with no big-ass tape machine. And he's like, well, why did I have to pay for the tape if I can't have it? I said, well, where the hell is the recording going to come from? Where you want me to record you on? I can't record you on the dat. I could bounce. He says, but you charge me for the tape machine. You charge me for that tape. I need my four, five, six, that piece of big ass tape machine. You charge me for it. So we go back and forth and I notice that he has caught on to the hustle. And, and look, at the end of the day, I'm an entrepreneur. So I couldn't give him back that big ass tape. Do y'all know why? Because after he left, I erased his vocals from that big tape, gave him the dat, and then I put somebody else's vocals on this big tape. So if I gave him the tape, oh, this guy will kill me because he'll hear somebody else's vocal. So one thing about me, I guess there's a side of me that believes in peace treaty like Jimmy Carter. So I was like, okay, I got to find the middle here. So the middle would be I would do four more tracks for him for free, um, being that... I couldn't retrieve his tape. And so what was great about having like Lauren in the basement at a young age, she was the one that was singing all the hooks, you know what I'm saying to you? So um, what was amazing when I look back at the Booger basement was the opportunity factor. The fact that we was in a hood, but there was a safe haven that kids feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like we could come here and maybe put a couple hundred dollars, and then later, we can actually have a piece of demo that we can go shop in New York. So to me, um, that's one of the most exciting things about having and envisioning a place like the Booger Basement. So the Booger Basement for us, I would say, was literally like our first record company you would say. So um, So we'll definitely have more stories about the Booger Basement, um, about the Outsiders, about Akon, Erica Badu, different people. At one time or another, names has surfaced through the basement or has physically come inside of the basement way before they blew up. So, um, so let's just start this episode and let's get into that, run that back. <laughs> 